Welcome back to IGN Live at E3. I'm here with Daniel from the IGN Japan hey. office. You may not even know we have an office in Japan, but Daniel can prove it because he goes to work there every day. I do. And we're here with Ash from Square Enix. Hey, how you doing? Great. We're talking about the new big expansion for Final Fantasy XIV, Stormblood. That's right. Yeah, so Stormblood uh, its coming out June 20th, next Tuesday. Early access actually uh, starts tonight or Friday morning at 2 a.m. Pacific. Uh, we're super excited. Not so soon. Yeah, it's really soon, really soon. We've, you know, we've been getting great reception of it uh, at the E3 hall here. We have people battling Susano. Yeah. Of our, well, one Daniel, of our yeah, I, I, I swung by the booth and I, I joined a team of uh, uh, the, the other guys that all come prepared, that all come together <laughs> in a team. And I was the only one who came in and just let the whole team down. What job did yes. you play? Uh, I was a dragoon. Okay. Yeah, okay. we lost. Yeah. We lost pretty bad. Oh, well, I'm, I'm sure sorry. It's, okay. you know, it's the first time the primal has been available, so it's not your fault. <laughs> it's not your fault. Yeah. Not you. So tell us, we're going to a new location in Stormblood. Is that right? Many new locations. Okay. But yeah, basically, so Stormblood is going to take that main story quest from Final Fantasy XIV and take it finally to Alamigo, where we've been talking about for a while now, liberating Alamigo from the Garlean Empire. Uh, we'll also be going to the Far East, uh, to the continent of Othard, where you'll be able to finally go to Doma, where. Uh, there's been a couple characters that have come over from that side during the Heavensward expansion, Yugiri and Kusetsu. So now you're going to see that, and uh, you get a whole new player city out there too, uh, Kugane. Uh, yeah, we're really excited, especially, I mean, the one thing I want to say, I have to always say when I talk about Final sure. Fantasy XIV is that if, if you've played any other mainline Final Fantasy games, Final Fantasy XIV is kind of like a hidden gem because it's an online version of an you know, epic Final Fantasy like story right. that never ends. Yeah. And it constantly evolves with the new patches that we have coming out. It's it's just a main line Final Fantasy story that like people just haven't experienced as much maybe as say some of the other ones. Sure. But uh, we, we can't we can't wait for other people to kind of continue that journey here. That's why I, I wanted to ask you about that. Final Fantasy 15 is out. That's right. Now we're getting a new big expansion for 14. Like <laughs> is 14 still going to be going after Final Fantasy 16 hey, is out? We like, hope. Is that the idea? We hope for Final Fantasy 120. <laughs> okay. well, wow. like, you know, like, why not? <laughs> cool. you, you never sort of lose count somewhere along the way. <laughs> No, we try not to. You know, <laughs> internally, I'm always calling it Final Fantasy 14 online because I like to make sure that I remember that that online, it's a platform, right? It's yeah, a service. It continu continually evolves. So. That's yeah. cool. You've introduced a new antagonist for Stormblood. Is it Xenos? There? Xenos, yeah. yeah. So he's kind of like our Kylo Ren, right? He's the big oh, bad that's right cool. now. Right. He's, he's right. the Emperor's son. Okay. So he's kind of, he's kind, of, kind of our big bad. Uh, you know, is he as emo as Kylo Ren is? Uh, you, he might be. Okay. He might Does he have be. a lot of hair <laughs> under his helmet? Yeah. That somehow magically fits in place. You know, you may or you may not see him without his helmet. I don't know. I don't know if you guys checked out the trailer. He looks like a pretty big badass. So, cool. yeah, okay. Yeah. You know, the one thing, uh, the other thing too is, I mean, the big thing with this expansion is we're getting two new jobs, right? Uh, the Red Mage and the Samurai. These are fan favorite jobs from the franchise, and we're finally bringing them into Final Fantasy XIV online. And I, mean, I'm, I have a level 60 black mage, so I'm partial to probably trying out the red mage more because it's kind of a hybrid mm -hmm. DPS from range as well as melee. Uh, your samurai is a little bit more of a typical melee DPS, but you know, you've got so many cool new options with all the existing jobs because Oshida san and the development team have overhauled the battle system. So there's actually, they streamlined it a lot. And if you notice on the screen right now, if you're watching some footage, yeah. You'll see that red sword up there and those, uh, mm -hmm. those three icons there. It's part of the new job gauges, which helps individuals who are playing their jobs have better timing with, on, you know, timing exactly what you want to do with your job action based on what's, what's on the job gauge there. And it gives you a good indication of when to do things. So it's just, you know, part of the new overhauling of that as well. There's a lot of really cool new features that, you know, that Stormblood's bringing out. And the, the battle system revamp is just one of them. So. Speaking of new features, though, there's one thing I was kind of interested to ask about. Yeah. Um, you have new areas, new uh, boss characters, new classes. Uh, one thing that uh, these people that I was lining up with to, to play with yesterday yeah. were super excited about, new furniture. Yes. <laughs> so, you know, the one cool thing about being an MMO is you have some of the tropes of being an MMO. Is housing, right. uh, customizing your air airship. Uh, obviously, with that customization comes the furniture options, whether it's an apartment or a house with your free company. Uh, but, you know, there's also PvP, you know, the side quests, all the quality of life stuff for, dungeon for queuing for dungeons. But... You know, I started playing Final Fantasy XIV and mainly played as a solo player for a long time. Uh, but I started to really start grouping up with people as the story kind of helped guide you into some of the dungeons and started queuing with them. And I joined a free company, and now it's become a you know kind of a thing that I'm doing with a bunch of my friends. Sure. So it's yeah. cool. But I, and I've been playing MMO since the '90s and Ultima Online and you know, World of Warcraft, Star Wars, World Republic. That, this, this game has all of the things that have been learned throughout the years. She just has an amazing job of just analyzing all the other MMOs and, one, and taking all those elements and bringing it into his game and then applying that JRPG, that mainline Final Fantasy, on top sure. of it. Yeah. And 
you know, to if you're a fan of either Final Fantasy or MMOs, it'll speak to you either way. I mean, this is a uh, the very rare Japanese MMO, also, right? Like, sure. I can't even think of another one that's like reached <laughs> this level of success. So. Yeah, you know, it it was rough for for a minute. You know, the, the original launch of Final Fantasy XIV uh, wasn't necessarily highly regarded. Uh, you know, had but had, you guys had, like had to problems. your credit, you totally turned it around. And, it's, I don't think it's ever been done in the industry to, to kind of see such a total revamp. And if I can plug something, I got to plug Danny O'Dwyer's No Clip. Uh, oh yeah, he's actually doing a documentary. <laughs> yeah, on, oh, wow. uh, on, cool. uh, on the rebirth of Final Fantasy XIV. So I think it's gonna be really cool. It's coming out soon. Uh, Very cool. But it's a really crazy story and. You know, from A Realm Reborn to Heaven's Ward to Stormblood now, we're hoping to be able to continue that success of being able to put out quality content. And like I said, I've, I've been around the MMO game for a bit. Sure. One thing that this, the team, this team does better almost than I think anybody is this patch cadence. Every two, every two or three months, you're getting new dungeons, you're getting new quality of life improvements, a lot. Yeah. yeah. And Stormblood itself is a pretty substantial oh, yeah. expansion, right? I you get you 10 levels. It's, a, it's an entire new game's worth of content, right? Yep, yep. multiple zones, new levels. It's, this is going to last you, hopefully, another year and a half, two years. <laughs> Especially with all the patch content that comes out after, it's, it's never going to end. So. Yeah. Yeah. Because um, Final Fantasy is obviously a series that's so story-driven. And most of the uh, you know the regular uh, numbered games in the series, sure. uh, they have a, you know, a, a grand story to tell. Um, when you're dealing with an MMO where you know people play it over a period of years and you continue to add new content, how do you make that sort of Final Fantasy-esque world come to life? Well, I think part of the storytelling is to take some of the same motifs and themes that you see in these mainline Final Fantasy games, this epic journey of being a warrior of light, and take that to this MMO but still allow the cinematic experience to be there for you because you're going to go on a journey of meeting a bunch of friends, losing friends, you're going to be political intrigue. There's going to be everything that you get um, and all the themes you've seen for all these other Final Fantasy games just constantly he evolving here every few months. Uh, and you get, obviously, that main one when you get the game itself or the expansion itself. And that lasts you just as long as you know your typical, or if not much longer, your typical your box product Final Fantasy game. But as I said, that story just keeps continuing, keeps continuing. And now, if you're asking me how they make the storytelling click to make it feel that way. I, I, I can be honest, I'm not one of the writers, I'm not one of the developers on the development team, but I feel it as I play it. And it, it's kind of a hidden gem. If you go to some of the communities, you know, whether it be our own community or you go to Reddit, you go to NeoGAF, they constantly say that it's kind of one of the hidden mainline story Final Fantasies that not as many people have played. Yeah. And, and, they, and they love it. Yeah, it's a hidden gem for them. Is it true that uh, in Stormblood you're either uh, tweaking or even removing some of the skills that weren't as effective yeah. as you'd hoped or weren't as popular? That's part of the battle system revamp, yeah. you know, so making it more streamlined and just making it more efficient. Um, there's also, a, a, what they've done is taken some shared job actions across tanks, melee, range, DPS, heals, and kind of grouped them together as well so you're not as isolated if you're playing one of the jobs versus the other and you actually now have shared roles, shared jobs, excuse me, across those roles so you can play them and not feel like you're being left out by being playing one of the type of a, cla of a job than the other. So that's, you know, I, I, there's just this, it's now it's a second expansion, right? So they've taken a lot of feedback, and we constantly take that feedback and bring it out to hopefully give them uh, in our community what, what they've been clamoring for for a while. Cool. Yeah. Well, fans aren't going to have to wait too long. Nope, nope. Stormblood is out, what is it, Tuesday? June 20th, and like I said, early access tomorrow, 2 a.m. So if you oh, don't need to go to sleep tonight. <laughs> no, I'm not going to be sleeping very much, no. <laughs> no. Uh, all you have to do is pre-order, and you can continue to, you know, even if pre-order over the weekend, you can still jump into early access as well. Cool. So, Ash, yeah. thank you so much for coming by the show. Thank, thank you. you. We're actually, uh, don't go away. We're going to toss you to some exclusive boss footage for Final Fantasy XIV Stormblood right here.